So this webinar, um, especially during, you know, our COVID, or during our COVID times right now, I felt Lisa and I both feel that it's very important that we wanted to go ahead and remind our staff about emotional agility. Um, Lisa Goodman's actually certified in aromatherapy, and so we decided to come together with a component for aromatherapy for resilience. So this will be covering developing a resilient attitude and also um, learning about healthy coping strategies. So our goals, by the end of this presentation, participants will be able to learn about the different types of stress, the concept of emotional agility, and how to increase your resilience. Oh, I'm sorry about that. So the objectives today are identify at least two differences between good stress and bad stress, verbalize understanding of the concept of emotional agility, recognize how our mindset and our thoughts influence our ability to cope with life stressors and difficulties, determine two common thinking errors, and identify three ways to increase emotional agility. So stress. Stress isn't the thing that happens to us. Stress is our response to the challenges we face every day. So for example, I'm afraid of heights. And so that thing, heights, isn't the stress, but it causes me distress. I get sweaty, um, my, I, my heart will palpitate. For example, if I'm afraid of, of heights and I am, I'm on a balcony and it's a second story building, for example, and it happens to be maybe a glass banister and I just happen to kind of peer over that banister, I get a little shaky. So that's the stress response. That is the stress. Like, so basically what it does to our body, for example, stress can be, str can be triggered by the environment, bad weather, pollen, lots of things are blooming right now. The weather is so hot. The morning's pretty dewy. So a lot of things are causing us to have these allergies. Traffic, for example, now that um, a lot more things have been opening up, you know, we didn't experience much traffic around March through probably around May or June, but now that things are opening back up, we're seeing more traffic on the freeway. People driving even faster than they used to now. Um, and so that's been causing a lot of traffic accidents. Socially, um, stress can be triggered by work, school, friends, and also finances. Physiologically, like I said, stress can cause body changes, inadequate sleep, and also illness. And also your thoughts. So your interpretation of um, a situation, you may be thinking irrationally, just not thinking clearly in the moment because you're stressed out. So good stress versus bad stress. So we do need some stress in our life, um, but the, the key is finding the sweet spot. So I'm gonna talk about the sweet spot in a moment here. But if we experience less stress, on the left-hand side here of the PowerPoint, it talks about you know when we're less stressed, we're feeling lethargic, bored, unfocused, directionless. We're feeling a lot of stress, anxiousness, obsessive, panicked, or possibly feeling numb. So here is the sweet spot right here, right in the middle. Um, right here is where you're feeling energized and you're engaged. I, there might be someone in the audience who might need a mute. Thank you. Energized, engaged, interested, you're learning, you're growing. This is where you want to be. This is your sweet spot right over here. So what makes stress bad for you is when you're not able to recover between periods of those stressors. So when they're compounding and you're not able to take a rest from stressors all, you know, that are compounding, that's when stress can be bad for us. So how do you handle stress? I'm gonna go over this, um, this grid right over here. Some of the permanent factors are genetics, history, your current stress load, environment, and support network. So those of us who are more tolerant of stress, genetically possibly could be stress resistant. For history, we are practiced at handling stress. So when, when we are in the face of stress, um, we are ready to roll, we're ready to, to um, act upon it. Their current stress load is pretty moderate. 
their environment. People who are stress tolerant often enjoy being in the outdoors and enjoy nature and spending time as to, you know, to find retreat in nature. And they spend a lot of time with their loved ones. And so in that case, their support network is quite strong. For, um, I'm going to go down now to the less, the less tolerant. So the, some permanent factors of genetics for those who are less stress tolerant are they're prone to stress. Their history, so they have little practice with stress. Um, they may be, uh, it might be somebody who is less practiced because they sweep um, stressful situations under the rug, for example, and just kind of let it just build up. Their current stress load, very high or very low. Environment, it's often in a clinical setting, also industrial spaces, and they spend little time with loved ones making their support network weak. So for those who are more stress tolerant, um, some factors can be shaped or built. So their coping abilities. So being able to calm themselves down when they get emotional is a coping st a strategy or ability. And also their attitude. They're more of a person who's go with the flow, optimistic, proactive, confident, agile. And so we'll get into agility in a, mo in a moment here. They view stress as a challenge to rise to. So this is not somebody who sweeps <laughs> stressors under the rug. They, they stand in the face of stress and they're ready to be challenged. For those who are less stress tolerant, um, some things that can be shaped, they are overwhelmed by emotions. And so sometimes just they might be thinking irrationally because they um, can't think clearly. They have trouble adapting. They may have more of a pessimistic attitude. They're reactionary. They may be someone who's not confident. Stress oftentimes feels like they, it's, they're paralyzed by stress and they view stress as a problem to avoid. So real quick here, I'm gonna go ahead and see um, people here on my screen. Let's see here. I'm trying to get my participants up here, which at the moment I can't figure that out, but that's okay. I'm gonna ask everybody to stand up where you are. So I'm gonna lift up my screen here. So the practice is to let's stand up. We have our hands right here. Go ahead and touch something. All right, so show of hands, how many touched something with their hand? And we probably did because it's, it's a habit that we touch something with our hands. Now, we got in a bad car accident. We now no longer have our arms. I'm gonna ask you to touch something else. So I'm putting my knee up on this table that I'm sitting, standing in front of. Okay, so that actually was actually a practice of emotional agility. Okay, so in that moment, knowing that you no longer had your arms, you're now thinking outside of the box. You're now thinking um, for a different solution. Um, that's actually having emotional, uh, um, emotional agility. So thank you. You can all sit down now. I'm seated. You're seated. I'm going to go ahead and Great, wonderful. Thank you for all participating here. Okay, so that was my little practice for let's stand up. That was our sharp best health little break. <laughs> okay, next slide. This lady is Dr. Susan David and Dr. Susan David um, coined the term emotional agility. And basically it's an, an individual's ability to experience their thoughts and emotions and events in a way that doesn't drive them in negative ways, but instead encourages them to reveal the best of themselves. So just a couple more thoughts there on, um, on Susan David. So emotional agility is an individual's ability to handle situations, people, thoughts, and feelings based on one's intentions and values in order to enrich routine functioning. The way we navigate our inner world our everyday thoughts, emotions, and self stories is a single most important determinant in our life success. This is a um, chart on your th on, on your th basically this is a chart on thought on your thoughts, and it's called the antecedent behavior consequence model, the ABC approach, um, and this can be used to help people examine behaviors for those who want to change the triggers of those behaviors, 
and the impact of those behaviors on negative or maladaptive patterns. Today, we're going to focus right here in the middle on the belief or your automatic thoughts. Here's a couple of scenarios. I know here today that we are a mixed group. Some of us are in a clinical setting and some of us aren't, but that's okay. So for scenario A, your normally happy-go-lucky friend texts you to find out if you're free to grab a coffee after work. You meet up with her. You notice her face is stoic, possibly sad. What might you think? Go ahead and start chatting in the chat box. Go ahead and just start freely writing to us. What might be you be thinking when you meet your friend for coffee and she's, she has this look up or appearance upon her face? Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and start reading off some of the, the chats in the chat box here. What might you think? What might you feel? She's having a bad day and to reach out to her. She needs someone to talk to. These are all wonderful. Thank you for sharing. Keep going. She's upset about something. Thank you, Kiki. Something stressful is happening in her life and I feel empathy. She looks so sad. She could be tired, broken, exhausted. Thank you, Catherine. Connie says she needs to talk. So with all these thoughts and all these sharing in our chat boxes, my next question to everybody is, what might you do next? Lorraine says she may feel lost. So you're sitting there and having coffee with her. What's your next step seeing, after seeing her appear this way? Ask her what's on her mind. That's a great one. Thanks, Lorraine. To be present. Ask if she's okay, if she wants to talk. Thanks, Angela. Ask her how she's doing. Ask her if something is bothering her. Wonderful. These are all great icebreakers. We're going to move on to scenario B. So for those of you who here who are healthcare workers, there's many nurses here on our list. You walk into the hospital room you use, of a usually very happy patient. And that's the gentleman here. I'm going to call him Mr. Morgan. You make eye contact and greet him with a smile and say, good morning. He rolls his eyes, frowns, and turns away from you. Now, what might you be thinking? Same thing, everybody. Go ahead and chat in the chat box below and go ahead and type your thoughts here about your patient who's typically um, very happy, is now rolling his eyes at you and just kind of turning over and not wanting and grimacing at you and not wanting to be, not wanting to see you in his room. That he may not be feeling well or he's possibly is hurting in his body. Great. Are you okay? Is that, that's what Kiki would ask him? Maribel would ask if something's bothering him. Great. That he may not feel well or he has some bad, or he got some bad news. Those are all really, really good thoughts. What might you do next? So we have our automatic thoughts. So to find the truth, what, what, what would we do next as our next step? Angela would um, ask for an assessment of pain. How did you sleep? Any anxiety? Okay, and we're going to go ahead and stop there with scenario B. And basically what I wanted everybody to practice was, again, emotional agility and not sticking to just one thought or one belief, especially our automatic thought um, that, you know, if he's not feeling well, you know, a lot of people here are saying that they would just kind of assess the situation and just start asking questions and see how he's doing um, and figure out and be more curious. And that's um, practicing emotional agility. So thank you, everybody, um, for sharing your thoughts on this slide. On to the next slide here. 
So breaking down your thoughts by asking yourself, one, questions that act as a reality check. Two, questions that seek alternative explanations, which I know that somebody here in our chat box had mentioned that they would take an assessment that was really great. Three, questions that put things into perspective. And four, questions that are goal oriented. So all of these breaking down your thoughts of this whole um, list here is um, the first step in developing a growth or an agile mindset. Cultivating emotional agility. So behaviors you can engage in that help you be emotionally agile. Practicing mindfulness. We're gonna go into our uh, Sharp Best Health resources that we have here for our Sharp employees in a moment. And so I'll share with you, um, we have Will, our mindfulness app exercise, build up those endorphins, social interaction, especially right now during COVID times. Um, I actually, for just a, as an example I want to share is um, I was born and raised in San Diego. And so I actually have friends that lead back to kindergarten. So over 30 years and we recently um, got together and we, we just started doing house party, which is an app on, on the phone and playing games. And it was really good to at least have some interaction, especially during the times of quarantine. And now we can have socially distant um, picnics and all that so at least it's a little bit nice to like you know, continuing on with your social interactions it's very very important getting enough sleep is definitely important right now and um sharp best health has, has resources for that as well to help especially for a night shift um resources for night shift especially with their sleeping during the day can be a little bit more difficult finding your purpose and also practicing gratitude some takeaways from this first part of this presentation is to keep an eye on your stress levels and how you are coping. Asking yourself if you are approaching your stress with a fixed or a growth mindset. Challenging your negative thoughts. Use the practice of emotional agility journey to cope with and overcome stressful situations. And decide how you can incorporate behaviors and activities into your life that cultivate emotional agility. We're now going to move into my favorite part of this presentation is just a quick recap on self care. So real quick, I'm going to introduce something called the cup analogy. Um, and this is going to um, require us to be interactive on the chat feature again. So let me go ahead and pull up the chat feature one more time. Okay, so every day you wake up with your cup that is with your cup that is full. And basically, we have components in this cup. So if I'm holding a cup here full of water, for example, um, and we bring these components to work with us every day, what components do you bring with you to work every day? For example, compassion, patience. Um, go ahead and type in the, in the chat box, Pretend this, you're, I'm holding a cup and you're filling my cup with the things that you bring to work every day to get you through your 12 hour shift. It might be empathy, love, positive attitude, wonderful, cheerfulness. Thank you, Connie. Happiness and humor, the sense of purpose and passion for my work, wonderful. Empathy, an open heart and mind, love it. And also mindfulness, thank you. So that's great. And your cup is filled to the brim. Now you're gonna go about your day. And this is where your cup starts to pour out your love, compassion, your goals, your patience. And sometimes we're at the midway mark of emptying our cup and we're not even halfway through, we're not even at the six hour mark. Okay, and sometimes it's one of those things that we have to check um, that throughout your shift, kind of um, ch like check yourself and to see where you are with your cup and how much you've poured out that day. Sometimes we've become empty and the cup is completely empty and we're at hour nine. We're not even at hour 12 yet. And that's something for you to consider when you're feeling that you're a little drained at work and you still have three hours to go. Um, 
this is the component where self-care comes into play with getting enough sleep and we're going to go into that um, getting enough of your own me time we're going to go ahead and um, go in so that's the cup analogy here and want to make sure that um, you're just getting a little temperature check every day when you come onto your work shift and making sure that you know your cup is full but at you know the halfway point are you at the halfway point at work at that time if not we may need to consider that um, we need to incorporate possibly more self-care at home for yourself to make sure that um, you're caring for yourself to keep through your entire shift next slide is so signs you are pouring from an empty cup, possibly feeling emotional exhaustion, depersonalization, lack of personal accomplishment, constant fatigue. Again, we talked about stressors earlier in the previous presentation about not being able to recover from stressor from between stressor and stressor. So there's constant fatigue because we're just compounded with more stressors throughout our day. You're dreading going to work possibly. Here you are, you know, putting on your, your business pants if you're working in our business office or here you are putting on your scrubs and you're just dragging, you know, and dreading going to work. You're irritable when you're typically a happy-go-lucky person, but you notice that even the littlest annoyances bother you. You find yourself to be a little bit more irritable. It could be a sign you're pouring from an empty cup. Changes in your sleep habits. Um, I know that many of us have, you know, gone through um, changes in our sleep habits during COVID. And so that's something that we do have some resources to help you with that as well. Feeling down in the dumps and feeling, um, I'm sorry, what, too, I can't read my last, feeling sick, feeling sick frequently. I apologize for that. My little talking bar was right over my, my slide. Thank you. Feeling sick frequently. So fill up your cup by practicing self-care. So self-care is a practice of taking action to preserve or improve one's own health. Now I want to go ahead and mention that this is the fifth provision of the American Nurses Association Code of Ethics. It states that the moral respect that nurses extend to all human beings extends to oneself as well. The same duties that we owe to others, we owe to ourselves. Self-care reduces stress, replenishes a nurse's capacity to provide compassion and empathy, and improves, and improves quality of care. So you can't pour from an empty cup. So take care of yourself first so you give the best care to our patients. So it's all about changing our mindset. Many times that we see self-care as a luxury um, or selfish. And so I want to go ahead and say that it's not a selfish thing, that we need to definitely have a work-life integration. Um, I know the term balance is used oftentimes, but we know oftentimes it's not a balance. So it's more of a work-life integration. It's not optional. It is the option to, to engage in self-care. And it's unique to you. Um, I want to go ahead and ask for just a couple of people to respond here on the chat box. Go ahead and share with me what you do for your practice for self-care. Um, what you do on a daily basis to make sure you know, you're engaging in um, keeping yourself whole and also filling your cup, whether it be walking your dog, practicing yoga, getting some sunshine, exercise, um, hiking, you know, whatever it may be, it's unique to you. I enjoy baking, especially during quarantine. <laughs> I've been enjoying baking and um, making sure I can have a healthy meal. Um, that way it provides me the nutrients, you know, to wake up and not feel groggy and not feel, you know, bloated, just going up and um, making sure I feel good about, you know, um, that I ate a healthy meal and I prepared it myself and not eating, you know, out all the time. Aromatherapy, wonderful. Um, and cleaning while listening to music, that's great. And Pilates and couponing, ooh, wonderful. I like to shop too. And gardening, I did a lot of gardening during quarantine. I'm still, I have, my pepper is growing like crazy and I love it. So this also requires action beyond knowledge and intention. So we know we need to go to, um, to practice self-care, we know about it, but it does require action. There have been a couple of um, nurse residency classes that I have taught the same um, presentation to, and they raise their hand and they say, you know, I, I was going to go get a massage, you know, and I asked them, well, well what happened? Um, well, life happened and it, you know, and I, I, more things just started piling on in my schedule and I just couldn't go and take care of myself. So it does require action beyond knowledge and intention. Again, taking good care of yourself makes your cup full because how could you pour out 
compassion and patience and all that for your patient at the end of the day. So like to go ahead and um, make sure that everybody walks away from this presentation creating a, an action plan for themselves. And also the last bit of here, it says it's self fullness. So caring for your own welfare so that you are able to care for the welfare of others. Okay. Um, just an essence of time here. These are the resources from Sharp Best Health, which you can find um, on SharpNet. Just type in Sharp Best Health. So we want to help you fill your cup, physical, social, mental, emotional, and spiritual. Um, again, these can all be found um, on SharpNet. If there's one here that you have certain questions about, please feel free to email us, sharpbesthealth at sharp.com, and I'll guide you to the page on SharpNet where you can find that. There's, um, I actually want to do a, a quick one minute practice on mindfulness next. So we're going to go ahead and skip this slide. But if there's anything here that strikes your interest, please feel free to reach out. Again, Sharp Best Health on SharpNet is where you'll find um, all of these resources and more. Employee Assistance Program. This program um, helps all SHARP employees meet the challenges related to balancing their work and personal lives. It's confidential, convenient, and free of cost with eight free appointments a calendar year. And of course, we have Catherine Riggs in a minute here, actually at six o'clock, that'll be leading the group discussion um, to talk more about the Employee Assistance Program. Going back to mindfulness. So studies have shown that mindfulness training can improve sleep, decrease stress, increase focus and create healthier eating habits. Um, also decrease the risk of high blood pressure and improve responses to difficult situations. We're gonna go ahead and jump into a quick one minute practice. Um, Lisa and I tested this earlier on our webinar um, through the computer and we noticed that if we were having a hard time hearing this actual practice, what we're gonna do though is because you can do this on the convenience of your own smartphone, I'm going to go ahead and pull up a one minute practice. I'm going to place it up to my microphone and in just easy as one minute, we can practice mindfulness. So if you can go ahead and get a little relaxed there in your chairs at home there, your couch, wherever you're seating, just get comfortable. You may keep your eyes open. You may close them however you'd like to practice. I'm going to pull up a quick one minute um, practice here. I'm going to take my headphone off so that I can use my, my mic and we'll just listen for one minute. This and this one in particular is called Kindness to Oneself. In this practice, we're going to take some moments to cultivate a kind, warm, caring attitude towards yourself. So first take a moment to reflect on any good quality, anything that you like about yourself, to tune into your sense of goodness, your innate desire to be happy. And then wish these phrases for yourself. May I be safe and protected. May I be healthy and strong. May I be happy and peaceful. May I live with freedom and ease. Take some moments to appreciate yourself and hold yourself with the spirit of loving kindness. Okay, wonderful. And so that was one minute of practicing on will. Again, this is free to all employees. More information again can be found on SharpNet, but please feel free to reach out to sharpbesthealth at sharp.com or myself, Janice Chin Quanco, if you have any questions about will. Um, I also wanna put a little um, snippet that will is also helps with our journey becoming a high reliability organization to help with um, our journey for zero defects and zero harm. And that because that's because it keeps us in the present moment. We're not, for example, for those of us who are working in a clinical setting, we're not worried about you know the last patient we saw. Um, we're not worried about the patient we're about to go see. Currently, I'm washing my hands and I'm in that moment washing my hands and just concentrating on that, for example. Okay. If there's any questions, um, please type them in the chat box here. Again, as I promised, um, I'll go ahead and it looks like we're going to likely send out an email to everybody tomorrow, but please type in your questions there and I'll scroll through and make sure I write them all down and we get them answered for everybody. So we're going to go ahead and transition to our next speaker. And that is Lisa Goodman, Integrative Care Coordinator um, here at Sharp Gross Hospital. 
Let me put your screen up for you. Yes, I will unmute you and I'll mute myself. Okay, I'm unmuted. Hi, everybody. Let's see. Well, I don't see myself up there, but hopefully everybody can hear me. Okay, so I'm Lisa Goodman, and I'm the coordinator for um, integrative therapies here at Grossmont Hospital. Um, I'm proud to say that on Monday, I will be celebrating 20 years. Um, most of that time was spent at Sharp Hospice Care, um, and the rest of um, the time I have now been at Grossmont Hospital. So I am certified in healing touch, um, clinical aromatherapy, um, guided imagery, um, just to name a few things that I do with our patients here. So I am a full-time practitioner here at the hospital working with our patients. Um, but I also get the opportunity to teach classes. Um, so I teach Healing Touch, um, and now I get the opportunity to share a little bit about aromatherapy with you all, which is one of my greatest passions and loves besides Healing Touch. So um, aromatherapy for resilience. Um, so many of you who know me personally know that I love aromatherapy and have found it to be one of the biggest tools that I use in my personal life and in my professional life to help with resilience. Um, resilience is the capacity to recover quickly from difficulties and in the workplace we know that that's so important to be able to bounce back quickly especially when we are working with patients that we can't hold on to things um, that we have to be able to recover quickly and move on and I have found aromatherapy has been the, one of the biggest tools <clears throat> So building resiliency using aromatherapy. So one of the articles that um, we found is written by, whoops, written by um, a person, a research um, led by Marian Revan. Um, she, uh, in her pilot study, um, wrote about nurses to help them reduce um, and feelings of stress, anxiety, exhaustion, and just being simply overwhelmed um, in their job um, working with patients. Um, and she writes, if we can improve our nurses' emotional reserves and give them more resiliency by using aromatherapy, give them a place to step back and do something um, mindfulness, do some mindfulness, um, we are doing a good thing at the end of um, also helping uh, our patient care. So that's, um, go ahead, next one. So at the conclusion of this presentation, the participants, hopefully you'll be able to specify three methods of application, identify three core indications of essential oils, name three relaxation responses that support a resilient mindset, and name two safety considerations for essential oils. Um, before I go on, I'd like to see in our chat box if you could, how many of you use aromatherapy or are or know about aromatherapy a little bit. Um, and um, so I'd like to just get a, um, an idea of those of you who already um, use it. Um, I've actually been using it myself for uh, 15 years. 15 years I was introduced to aromatherapy along with Healing Touch. Um, so nice, nice to see. Um, I know there's two, two gals on here um, right off the top of my head, Tanya Jones and Nancy, who are from two north, two south here at Grossmont Hospital. Um, they use it and they got their staff to be using it um, for self-care along with the patients, you know, using it for patients too, but that's so awesome. Okay, so next. So Janice is actually helping me with my slides because again, this is brand new to me too. So bear with me. I'm, this is the first time I'm ever doing this um, on a computer like this. So, okay, define aromatherapy. Aromatherapy is the holistic therapeutic application of genuine and authentic plant-derived essential oils for enhancing the physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual health. Next slide. 
So the plant materials that we use to distill to get our essential oils are from the flowers, the fruits, the zests, um, grasses, leaves, needles, twigs, the resins, roots, seeds, and woods. I bet most of you didn't know that that is all plant material that's used to create essential oils. Most of us know lavender. That's the most popular scent that's used and has been used for um, hundreds of years. And, and it's in a lot of beauty products. It's in a lot of soaps and lotions and all the things at Bed Bath & Body Works. They are pretty, pretty famous for that. So that flower up on the top is the lavender flower. And that's the part of the plant that's used to create the essential oil. The picture on the bottom is actually Palo Santo wood. So you can actually burn Palo Santo wood um, kind of like you would burn sage you can actually do that and I have lots of that in my house um, and then also they can and that happens to be one of my favorite essential oils um, is Palo Santo. So uh, next slide. So this is actually how essential oils are created. So if you follow the diagram one all the way to six, one is the the heating or it's going to create, it heats and it creates the steam that then goes through and pulls out the oil out of the matter that's the plant matter that's put in there. Um, and then that rises, the oil rises with the steam and then it goes over to number four, the condenser. And then it goes to number five where it's in the separator, which to me, that's the most fascinating part because the oil rises to the top and that's where your essential oil comes from. And then the reserve, which is the bottom, which is the water or the, the more liquid, the water, that creates a floral water, which can also be used. We actually, in um, clinical aromatherapy, we call it a hydrosol. And though you can actually um, look those up and many aromatherapy, uh, aromatherapy companies sell hydrosols as well. And that's something that you would spritz um, around your room or something like that. And they use it in beauty products as well. So next slide. Um, so the methods of application. So this is um, the part that has become more common, I guess, today. So next slide. So our first one is our inhalation to build your resilience. So, so the first one, direct inhalation. So I don't know, because I can't see myself on my screen because somewhere I disappeared on my own screen. Um, so if you can see the bottle that I have in my hand, Janice, can you see it? Yes. So this is a, a bottle of an aromatherapy, essential oils. So direct inhalation would mean I'm gonna open up this bottle which of course I didn't open before I came and I have sweaty hands, so it doesn't want to open. There we go. So this, just smelling it just like this, back and forth a couple of times, that is direct inhalation. Now the next one, palm in inhalation, is where you would actually take it and you would drop a, a, a drop of the oil on the palm of your hands and you would rub your hands together and then hold your hands over your nose and you would um, smell that in. That's palm inhalation. Then the cotton ball in the cup is what we use here at the hospital for our patients. And it's also what, if you all looked inside your paper bags that I made you with the oils, um, that's what I put in your paper bag is a cotton ball in a cup. And that's what you would then, you would smell. Oh, that smells good. That's frankincense. Another one is an inhaler tube. Now, I apologize, I didn't give you guys one of these to make on your own, but they're not expensive to buy. You just Google or go on to Amazon and inhaler tubes um, has a little cotton um, round in here and you place a couple drops of your essential oil, place it inside your inhaler tube and then close it, close the top and then you would then have your little um, aromatherapy inhaler tube that you could just take out and smell and then close it back up, stick it in your pocket as you're going along. So this is something that I suggest, um, especially for nurses that are, um, when you're you know, seeing, especially if you have difficult patients and you're just having a tough time, a tough day, this is something that you could stick in your pocket, make it in the morning, stay in your pocket, these things last up to six months. And so 
it is a great tool to use for resilience during the day when you're having a tough time just take it out and sort of smell and then put it back in your pocket and then kind of go about um, your business um, so an ex the example I have here um, would be putting a, a drop of lavender. If I think most people have lavender essential oil uh, in their home. It's like a staple almost. I know it is for me. So just put a drop of lavender essential oil in the palm of your hand, rub your hands together, and then that would be um, a good way. I do that in the car a lot right before I'm going to drive because I'm a nervous driver. Okay, so next slide. So the next one is diffusing. So if you're, f if Diffusing has become very popular today. It's actually become kind of popular in our um, workplace, which it shouldn't be because that is one of the things that people um, are very sensitive to is when it the, the continuous diffuser goes and you've got essential oils and it's something that you would want to use at home, um, not really in the workplace, but more um, in your home. I use mine at night and I place, this is recipe I put here for you on the example, um, two drops of Roman chamomile, three drops of lavender, I put that in my diffuser at night and I let my diffuser go for about five hours. Um, I get the best sleep. Instead of Roman chamomile, you can also use cedar wood. Cedar wood is a fabulous oil to blend with lavender um, to put in your diffuser at night. Okay, next one. So topical use to build your resilience. Um, so you know you can buy base creams i've gotten creams and i've gotten gels and lotions and i've gotten all of it at costco you can get it at walmart too um and something that's already it's unscented something that's just a base it's unscented and then you would add a couple drops of essential oils to that and create your own um, based on what you want um, cream that um, doesn't have any synthetic um, additives in it. It would just be your base cream and it would be your uh, pure essential oils to um, make something for yourself. Um, and actually in the oil section at the end, what we're going to do, if you if you already looked inside your little bag, I gave you guys each um, a little um, amber bottle that you're, you would be, you would put your uh, essential oils in and then you would top it off with the oil like an almond oil or a grapeseed oil. And then you would put your little top on, boom, place that on there. And now you've got a little roll that you can then roll on you, um, on your wrist, you could put it, you know, on your neck, behind your ears, you can roll it on your feet if you want to. Um, it's great. Okay, next slide. Okay, so core indications for essential oils. These are usually why people are drawn to a certain oil. Why, why we choose to go to lavender. Well, I choose to go to lavender for almost everything because lavender is a universal oil that is good for so many things. So um, anxiety, for example, a core indication for anxiety, you could use ylang ylang, lavender, or jasmine. Those are all three great oils for anxiety, depression, lavender, frankincense, and clary sage incredible oils for depression, um, burnout and exhaustion, could use lemon, geranium, tangerine. Now I wouldn't suggest using all these together because they probably wouldn't smell a whole real, real good together, but separately these are good. Um, trouble sleeping, cedarwood, Roman chamomile, lavender, my go-tos for sleeping. I sleep so good. Um, uplifting, sweet orange, we actually use that in our hospital at Grossmont Hospital. Sweet Orange is one of our um, the oils that we use for patients that are feeling sad, just kind of feeling down. Um, we use that um, for our patients. Bergamot, grapefruit, great also. Um, and then fatigue, we have lavender, rosemary, and peppermint. So the fatigue, so I had mental fatigue a few years ago. Oh, I hear somebody. Um, we had a, I had mental fatigue a few years ago, finishing up my, um, my degree, my college degree. I had to write a lot of papers and I was so exhausted after working a full-time job and going to school at night. I would use rosemary in my diffuser while I was writing papers and it worked like a charm. Okay, next slide. Oh, there we go. Okay, relaxation response to promote um, a resilient mindset. So 
there are there are there's lots of research there's lots of research on uh, essential oils today on showing the benefits and so um Essential oils have shown to promote the following reduction of blood pressure, slowing of heart rate, normalizing the respiratory rate, improved duration and patterns of sleeping, which for me, that's so big, increased concentration levels for all you managers and you leads out there, those concentration levels are really important. Um, improved sense of well-being, that's for all of us, for everybody well-being is so important um, and the reduction of muscular tension which we know mostly is like in our neck and our shoulders and things like that okay next slide okay safety considerations so i'm pretty sure that all of you have heard someone that you know or or have seen someone that's had some kind of reaction that'll say i'm allergic to essential oils or aromatherapy don't use it around me or i don't like it because it gives me a headache it's usually because of the quality so the quality of your essential oils is so so important um, i'm going to tell you this that if you go to the Dollar Tree or the 99 cent store and you see essential oils, aromatherapy sold there, I probably would run. Don't buy it. Do yourself a favor. If you're looking for therapeutic quality essential oils, you're going to have to spend a little bit more money on them, but the quality is everything and you will get a better benefit um, if you just invest a little bit more um, than going to like the Dollar Tree. Or something like that okay dermal um, so so skin so your dermal your skin so don't use don't take your bottle and then pour it on your hands without using some kind of um, carrier like olive oil or avocado oil or you know apricot oil or whatever use something um, and mix it together before you put it on. You always want to dilute it. You never want to put it straight on your skin because most of the time, if you have delicate skin, it's going to bother your skin. Um, I will say the eye irritant. Um, so if you're working with peppermint essential oil, um, just from experience, I didn't go blind. I didn't die, but I got peppermint oil in my eye. It does burn. So just beware of that and be careful of it. Um, and when you're working with essential oils, you need to know which oils cause skin irritations or that could, something that's like a hot oil, something that's considered um, to be a hot oil, like I have written down here, cinnamon, clove, lemongrass, oregano, and thyme, those are considered hot oils and they probably would make your skin red if you didn't dilute them, okay? Integrity of your skin, please do not use essential oils on a part of your body that's got a sore, that's an open sore. Um, just don't do that. Uh, wait till it's healed up. For example, um, I had neck surgery a few years ago and they went through the front of my neck and so I waited about three weeks before this, my, I was able to touch my neck before everything healed up enough. And then I was able to work with my essential oils to help the scarring of, cause I mean, gosh, that's right in the front of my body. I didn't want it to scar real bad. So I use essential oils on it. Um, age, avoid using with infants. I, you know, I don't have infants in my life anymore. My kids are older and I don't know anybody that has infants. I just say, if you are going to use them, be really cautious. Uh, children are, are very sensitive as older, older folks are very sensitive. Pregnancy, I just, unless you've been using essential oils forever and ever and ever, and you become pregnant and you still use them, I'm saying that's probably okay. But if you're brand new, to essential oils and you're and you're just getting you're pregnant for the first time i would say avoid it um, because you just never know pets avoid cats in general um, dogs usually their respiratory system is pretty good and dogs don't usually have an issue i have been told uh, that cats are very sensitive um, and have a, a smaller respiratory system and it anyways diffusing oils in cats don't mix so don't do that and then respiratory, know your audience if you're going to use essential oils. 
around people that um, have asthma, that have respiratory issues, um, always ask them, oh, what essential oil did you use for your scar? I blended hilichrysum, frankincense, and lavender with vitamin E oil and rose hip. And I massaged that on my neck for a couple months and you can't even hardly see my scar. And it was pretty twisted when it first, when I first happened. So it looks pretty good. Okay, next one. Creating an aromatic blend. So this is what we were going to do um, together because originally this class was supposed to be taught in person. So that's why we made you these little bags with this, the little samples and the cups. Um, because that's the best we could do. Okay, so creating the blend. Next one. So developing an aromatic blend using essential oils. The definition, a blend of essential oils deepens the therapeutic actions and can address many physical, mental, and emotional ailments simultaneously. So an aromatic blend, yes, Kiki, I'll do that for you. An aromatic blend is a combination of three to five essential oils using the blending factor scale from one to 10. I personally would only go to three. I have, I have not ever created a blend of essential oils more than three, but then using vitamin E and rosehip oil um, to make my blends. Um, so the blending factor scale is a measurement. One, meaning the most powerful aroma, which you would use less, okay? Like patchouli, for example. Patchouli is super strong. You would want to just use a little bit of patchouli versus um, a lot of it. Okay, so, and then 10 measures lighter using more drops in the blend. Most blends that I create start with lavender as my base because it measures so light. So you could use more lavender and then less of your stronger oils. Okay, next, next one. Okay, so now we get to practice. Get your little paper bags and let me get to my little slide on my thing here. Oh, sorry. Yes. I don't know how to go back to that. Okay. Okay, hold on. So we have a question. Just a comment on getting essential oils in your eyes. If you do get it in your eyes, wash it off with a carrier oil. Um, water will make it sting more. Correct. So we don't use water at all when you, um, with the essential oils, you don't, you don't go wash it with soap and water and all that. You use a carrier oil. I say that's why I always have olive oil um, on hand always. You just stick it on a cotton ball and then you would wipe it or you would just gently um, kind of wipe around your eye. I don't, I don't know that I got the olive oil in my eye per se. I think I just wiped around it. And it was about 10 or 15 minutes before the, the, the burning sensation went away. But like I said, I didn't go blind, I promise. Okay, so um, we're gonna get right here to let me go. But thank you so much for pointing that out. That was awesome. Okay, so now you have your cups. So now we're gonna do this little experiment, okay? So now you have your, your cups. So I want you to smell each one by itself. So you're going to take, you're going to do like, I don't, no particular oil or order, but um, so lavender, I guess I have up there first. So you're just going to kind of smell the lavender. Okay, so we're just going to, I'm going to do this quickly, okay, because we are running out of time. So you're going to smell each oil, okay. So you've got your lavender, your rose geranium, your cedarwood, sweet marjoram. That's an oil I've never worked with and I wanted to work with it to learn how to work with it. So that's why I added sweet marjoram. And then frankincense. So how you would do that is you would smell each oil individually and then you would take in the directions, you would smell the lavender, the rose geranium and the sweet marjoram together and then put those aside and then do your frankincense, your lavender and your cedar wood together. 
and then put that aside. And then you would do your lavender, cedar wood, and sweet marjoram. Smell those together and you literally do it like this, just like this, and you smell them to see if you like that. And if there's something that you don't like, then take one away that you think it is, it is and take it away and then smell and go, okay, you know what? That's the one I don't really want that one. And let's try a different one and see if I like that. Okay, so next slide. Sorry, I have to go kind of fast on this part. I didn't realize we were so, um, short on time. Um, okay, so now I don't know how to stop it. Cancel, stop, 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 stop. Are you kidding me? Okay, so technology, oh my gosh. Okay, so I, I did three blends for you guys. So creating a stress blend. So here's how you would create a blend. You choose a core, you would choose an enhancer and a harmonizing. Okay, so the, um, I chose lavender as my core, meaning the one that has a blending factor that's, that's um, like seven, which is what lavender is and you would use like six drops and then you would do your enhancer which strengthens the core purpose and therapeutic action i chose sweet marjoram because again i wanted to learn to work with this oil blending factors three meaning it's very strong so we're just going to do two drops and then your harmonizing essential oil supports and enhances the vitality of the purpose of the overall blend. And then I chose rose geranium and I added two because the blending factor again is, um, is two, which means it's really strong. Okay, so this is, so if you take this and, and I believe that we send them this PowerPoint, right? Okay, so this is exactly how you would create, and it's a 10% dilution, which is for this bottle that I gave you, okay? So it's 10 drops total, and then top it off with your carrier oil that you choose. I would say use something um, like a grapeseed oil or something like that. Olive oil is great too, a little thicker. Grapeseed oil is a little thinner. Um, and then you would pop your top on, and then mix it together and then that would be um, or you could also do it in an inhaler tube and do something like that to create um, and then the next one is a meditation blend same exact concept you start with your core then you add your enhancer and then you do your harmonizing and i gave you the exact um how you would uh do your drops and then so the next one and then a sleep blend. Um, so the lavender, cedar wood, and then the sweet marjoram. Awesome. I thought it was awesome anyways. And so, um, and again, that's the exact how you would do it and you, and you would do it right into here. Okay. Sorry, I had to go so fast on this part. So is that the, the <gasps> questions that we have no time for, but please send them if you have any questions for me. So this was just a very basic, um, how to do this. I, I hope that, um, oh, I forgot one thing. So sorry. Okay, one thing. So um, bracelets. So I, well, bef before COVID, pre-COVID, we were allowed to wear these bracelets, but right now we can't. Um, a lava beads. Lava beads will hold essential oils for hours. And so I wear is I wear um, bracelets, except not at work now because I can't. Um, but this is another way to help keep you. Um, I, I use lavender every day on my um, lava beads and I, it just really helps keep me in the present moment to keep me relaxed, um, to move through um, my day. So thank you guys so much. I'm so excited to have done this. Um, and please type your questions and Janice and I will respond to those tomorrow um, and next. Thank you everybody for the first part of our um, emotional agility and aromatherapy for resilience. We're now going to go on to our discussion portion of our um, of our webinar. And before we do that, I know that I've again I've invited everybody, and I know that there's somebody here who tuned in later. Um, and that one is the Samsung Galaxy. I just need you to unmute yourself real quick so we can get your name down, especially if 
um, you'll be doing a CEU credit. I want to make sure that we have you here on roll call. So if the S Samsung Galaxy 10 plus, I think it was, could they could unmute? It's Lupita. Thank you, Lupita. Appreciate you. Thank you. Um, wonderful. Just so we have everybody here um, on roll call. Another thing I want to do quickly, if you're going to leave right now before our group discussion, if you wouldn't mind taking this quick um, QR code, basically all you have to do is um, from your smartphone, and remember I emailed everybody this morning with the actual hard copy. Please take the time and complete this for all attendees, whether or not you're getting CEUs or not. All you have to do is take your smartphone, hold it up with the camera feature on, and it'll um, a link will pop down on the on your screen. Click on that. That's a survey monkey that we provided. And there's both speakers, myself, Janice Chinquanco as your first speaker, and then Lisa Goodman, your second speaker who just wrapped up her show. And so basically we're gonna go ahead and make sure that um, we account for all attendees. Now, if we're gonna go into our group discussion right now with Katherine Riggs, um, I'm gonna go ahead and change the screen here in about 10 more seconds. I'll come back to the screen after our group discussion. I just wanna make sure that for those who are leaving right now, um, that um, you can go ahead and do your um, quick survey that way or you can submit it by a hard copy and make sure that gets submitted to Lisa Goodman um, just so that we can account for everybody on here and basically that just helps he us here at Sharp Best Health plan webinars for our future. Um, if this is a webinar you feel can be very useful throughout all of our sites, we'd be happy to host this multiple times throughout the year. Um, and you guys are actually our pilot. So thank you again for joining us. Again, my name is Janice Chinquanco from Sharp Best Health. And for those of you who are staying, stay on. And I'm gonna go ahead and let uh, Catherine Riggs, our manager of EAP, take the reins here who has just unmuted herself. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove myself here. I'll stay here for the show until the very end and I'll flash this on the screen once again. Okay, here we go. Okay, so then is it so we have five people on picture. Can you take that I'm, down? I'm going to go ahead and make it more. Yes, I will. I'm going to go All ahead right. and share my screen and um, choose a, a different screen. Give me one moment okay. to figure this one out. So stop, sh new share. I wonder if... Does everybody see the screen with everybody on it? I just want to make sure if with net head nods, that way it can be more of a group discussion. Does, well, does got, everybody see got that? Two, you've got two views going. Do I have two views? Yeah. Well, at okay. least on mine. Um, it may just be your settings, but basically I was just trying to make sure that everybody can be seen in a collage. Is that showing up for anybody here? If not, that's okay. Um, it's, Catherine, not in my, it's not in my settings. So, Catherine, if you go up on the actual view, there's one line, a thicker line, two lines, and then a square of nine. Do you see that on the different views on the upper toolbar? I'm, I'm clicking on it. Okay. I have speaker view. Speaker I have view, gallery view. Gallery, gallery, view. gallery view would be great. Okay, gallery view, it's only me. And I wonder if it's because I'm the host. Let me make you a host co-host okay do you see more people oh now i'm just going back basically on the left i have your desktop and on the right i have five people okay but it doesn't matter you keep messing with it and i'll start talking <laughs> okay okay uh-huh okay hi you guys um so Lead a discussion. So that's kind of an interesting concept. So I, I really responded and said, yes, of course I would jump in. Only because it's just an opportunity for me to outreach to you guys again <clears throat> and remind you about your employee assistance program and the benefit, that the free benefit. But before I go into that, I just wondered if there's Anything that, you know, when I was thinking about you guys and thinking about gathering, I was thinking about, you know, we're six months in, right? And I'm just wondering, so how are you guys doing, really? How are you before versus how are you now? I'm going to go ahead and ask everybody, feel free to unmute yourselves now. And since we're all in different homes and places, um, there should be no feedback. That way we can have an open discussion. Well, I can start if you want, Kathy. Okay, cool. So, 
I think I'm in a better spot now with, you know, initially when COVID hit in March, well, in February and March, everything right. was very scary. And so uh, me personally, you know, I, um, um, I kind of stayed isolated at home, right? Like many, and, um, and then just focus on isolation at home and working and that's all we did and so right. then we we got our own COVID units right and so right. we we learned how to work with covid and and made it safer feeling um right. and then from there we just started building the resiliency right right and then we started you know going with the motion but i didn't realize how how bad it was for me um i think the anxiety of trying to go out I had like two months I didn't go to the grocery store. To go out. I had like two months I didn't go to the grocery store. And then I started little by little. I think three weeks ago was, was the first time I went. I think I'm hearing you, Lisa. So, <laughs> so it was very um, eye opening that we can start. You almost kind of almost feel guilty for going out. Um, and enjoying some kind of life, like being normal. Um, but it's in, and I didn't know how much impact I had on my, my 11 year old kid. Right. Because she was also very panicky and anxiety when we went right. to the beach and I, I had to go back and go, I created that. <laughs> uh, and that was really hard for me to see. So I had to take down and really explain to her how people catch COVID and how we were safe where we were at and the practices we had, right? And so um, I think we're, that's where I'm at right now personally. So little by little, I'm getting a little bit more comfortable, but you almost kind of feel like say guilty for even enjoying a little bit of life. <laughs> huh. But I'm really happy for you that right. you're finding those moments of joy mm -hmm. you know, and, create, and, and actually thinking outside of your box, out of, outside of the box. You know, and I think that what I'm feeling is that um, there's also that secondary thing where, yes, we're getting our systems in place. You know, we're starting to get our, our routines down. Routines down. And then, ooh, that's and kind then. of kicking back. So, um, but I also hear about this sense of isolation, you know, and, and, um, and I think we feel it. I mean, I actually feel safer at work than I do out in the community. And I think that a lot of us, you know, kind of are struggling with that and rethinking what friends we're going to hang with and which ones we're not. Right. And, um, and I think the first thing that I noticed, and you guys can just kind of chime in, but I think at first we were all just running as fast as we could trying to figure out how we were going to do this, you mm -hmm. know, and, you know, after we got all our toilet paper and we got all our water and we got all those basic things taken care of, then it's still, you guys are still, you know, pedaling as fast as you can, you know, and it's yeah. almost like you go from one place at work and then outside. And I know that you guys all have really high personal care plans already but then it's like when we've got this covid thing going on i know for me the stuff that i used to do to take care of myself was not the same things that i could do now right even when we were talking about friends or your daughter right and um and then having one layer after another just keep kind of going on top of each other and um and so i'm and even when i have rounded on covid floors um, and I don't know if you guys are, it doesn't matter. Even if you're not on a COVID floor, you're still being impacted. So, right. Even if you're administration and it doesn't matter. It's like, if they find out that we work at Sharp, you have people out in the community looking at you a little bit different, wondering if you're one of those, if you're one of those, you know, <laughs> so, right. I was telling somebody that I felt like I had a scarlet letter, you know, just kind of like. S for sharp, but you know, it's like if they know that I work in healthcare, I mean, it's that thing. It really does affect us. And it's not like everybody gets it. Not even like our family members, right? <laughs> so it is lonely. So, um, 
And we here at the EAP are mindful of that, not to use overuse that word. What I loved about this training today that they put together was that, I mean, it was reminding me, it's like I have lavender in a little container back at home. And it's like, I have not even gotten that out yet, <laughs> right? We, you know, it's like we forget all these things that we've like put together to take care of ourselves. But really, just like Janice was saying, we forget to take care of ourselves. Because we're all on autopilot trying to keep our head above water. And it's like, I would have never in a million years thought that I would be doing counseling on Zoom, for goodness sakes. I would have taken that all the way up to the top. You know, that's a violation and la, 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 la. So we had to think outside of the box, just like you guys do, right? Well, Catherine, what I think... Um because uh, obviously everybody has a stressful job, right? Right. And, uh, and managing uh, three departments and the ins and outs right. of the business. I, I learned last year how to be, um, how to take care of myself better by doing the things I enjoy doing. And Sherman, he, he has my Facebook, so he sees how I go out. <laughs> I like to go to concerts. I like to go out and just enjoy, you know, some live music. And then all well, we of that can't stopped, do that right? now, right? And right. Then all of a sudden it stopped. right, 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 but right. That right. was my outlet, so right. I had to learn how to right. find a different outlet, right? Exactly. If not, it was going to kill me <laughs> because I have right. stressful kids at home. I have a four-year-old, eleven-year-old, and Holy I, was I was living here for X amount of hours, so it was just mm. sending me over the edge. So I needed to find something, and so the oils I use oils at home. Um, but I had to find a different way to help relieve some of the stress. Uh, and I feel like that's what's happening with a lot of the, the staff, right? It's right. like their outlet was, well, let's go have fun and let's go out to lunch or a drink after work, right? Or let's just enjoy some food. But we couldn't do that. So then right. uh, a lot of the staff were in turmoil in the very right. beginning. And, and the stress came up because we didn't know how to, else to do our, our outlet. <laughs> At, you know what? And I've heard that all over the place and that's very normal. And so, and, and, you know, and I've heard people that have had nightmares, you know, when this first started rolling out and like, you know, you know, where are we going? What's the resolution going to be? And then it was like, wait a minute. So how much longer is this going to be going on? And then it's like, and now what I'm hearing is like, everybody's acting as if we're going, you know, we're going back to being, how it was, you know, we're all about numbers and, you know, and whatever. And it's like, yeah, but we're here, we're still doing COVID patients. You know, we're still having, we've still got people out there that are trying to figure out how they're going to juggle patient care, I'm, parenting, sorry. You know, are they going back to school or are they not going back to school? And, you know, and it's, and how are we going to manage that? So here's my first commercial. So we have started and we're working on a parenting support group, just so you know. So, and we do do HIPAA compliant Zoom and our contract for the EAP for the HIPAA compliant Zoom account is completely separate from the rest of Sharp. And we did that on purpose so that it wasn't, so that it was still, we're still completely confidential, just so you know. And so one of the things that I wanted to just kind of offer to you guys is actually go, doing an ongoing support group, maybe for Grossmont, you know, or maybe for COVID or, you know, whatever. And one of the things, Tanya, that's working down at Chula that I just started doing is in their wellness center, what we had them do is, because um, you guys are, you know, when I was there at, at the at the wellness center at Chula, I mean, at Grossmont, you guys don't leave your patients and you can't leave your patients. You don't have time to leave your patients. So then I thought, um, so anyway, this is what we're doing at Chula and I think it might work with you guys. I was already talking to Janice about it, is Tanya you, Tanya, you would be the role model. You would come down and you would see the EAP and what they're doing is they're sitting in that relaxing chair and then I'm teaching them a mindfulness technique that's called feel rest, which is totally awesome. So it's like if I get a little bit gushy about it, because you actually find pockets of rest in your body. 
and then you tap into it on those 12 hour shifts that Janice is talking about. And it's something that you can, you can strengthen and um, take it, you can actually pull from it. Let's just like Janice was saying, going from one to the next to the next. I do the same thing. I go from one client to the next to the next, or I can go from one meeting to the next to the next, but in that little tiny bullet, in that little tiny pocket of time, when you're washing your hands mindfully, right? You can also be going, now, where was that pocket of rest? I need to like reboot and renew and then go forward. But it's in your body. You're carrying it with you. It's not, but it's something to practice. Anyway, it's working down at Jula. So one at a per, one at a time, you guys would come down and it only takes like 10 minutes. Yeah, see, but see, now you've mentioned that and I would have never thought EAP would do that, right? Um, right, because we're still thinking outside of the box. Well, see, I was telling Janice, though, because I've been here for a long time, right? I've been here almost 18 years. And I know, Sherman, you've been here as long as, longer than me, probably. But we've always seen EAP as counseling. Right. Right. So if, if I think counseling, then uh, I have to admit that I need help, Right. Right. So Actually, the, healthy people. You know, people come to the EAP. Um, sorry, I just interrupted you. No, no, it's fine. But, but I just wanted to kind of dispel that. Right, because, and that's what staff need to hear. Yeah. Well, this, but again, here's my personal, co I, I'm like you, Tanya. It's like when I'm off work, it's like I play hard and I work hard. I mean, I am like all in about what I do for a living. I'm all in. But it's like, so I already had my personal care plan all working out. Well, it's like... As soon as this hit, I couldn't do anything that I like to do. And I call it house arrest. I mean, you know, my big social event was going to the grocery store. Well, this is, and then I didn't like going to the grocery store because I didn't feel safe, right? In the beginning. Well, anyway, so my knee jerk reaction was to sign up for another class. I figured, well, if I'm on, a house, if I'm on house arrest, I might as well learn something. And I have been um, exposed to mindfulness and I'm a big you know, I'm, I'm a, a convert. And so anyway, so I signed up for a class to learn how to teach mindfulness. And so what I like about that is that it's, some, and then, so I've gone, you know, I've been doing it this whole time, right? So I'm going to get a certificate when I'm done with it. But when I heard, when I was taught about feel rest, I thought this is so perfect for us. You know, because it's like, so yes, you can do the will thing. And it actually, I went on that earlier today, Janice, and it's a lot easier to get into than it yeah. was in the beginning. So it was just, but it's like, but what I like about this is that this is something that you will have with you. You know, it's not, it's just, it's kind of like, you know, when uh, Lori, Lisa was talking about doing the lavender, which um, I'm, I'm going to go get mine out of my, my, What's it called? Medicine cabinet. Bathroom. Yes. It's like I'm going, I can't believe I can't, I can't believe I don't have that out. But I have, I'm a lavender junkie. Mm -hmm. But I forgot. I forgot. But you guys just reminded me. But anyway, I got distracted. Feel rest. Right. No, I know it's feel rest, but I couldn't figure out where I was talking. So I get excited about it because I really believe in it and I'm passionate about it. And I finally figured out a way to like get it out there. You know, it's like, so, and I, so, because we're thinking outside of the box, right? And so, because of my, that's what it was, because I win, I win, right? Because it helps me be better. I'm taking care of me. My team wins because, you know, I'm not bouncing all over the walls saying, oh, we could do this, and then we could do this, and then we could do this. You know, I'm creative, which can be a fault, you know, at times, drives people crazy. But then also, then I can like trickle it out you know, out to whoever's interested. And yeah, we're always evolving. We're always evolving in what we're doing. So, um, and I think that I absolutely think that this Zoom thing is gonna um, hang on because um, it's so much easier. You guys don't have to get in your car. Although I have two people that are, have their offices right by Grossmont and we do get a lot of utilization. But people come, people call the EAP because their 11 year old is acting out. People call, that doesn't mean there's anything wrong or, you know, counseling. I used to call it consulting, you know, at different times, or I've called, or, and I also am a coach. So it's just, 
But all of us, see, that's the thing. It's like when you call the EAP, SharpNet, just like everybody else, go under, you know, A through Z. Um, I sent Janice a whole bunch of different flyers, <laughs> handouts that she's probably going to inundate you guys with but you know you can always just call us and consult with us and we can figure out what would be the best fit for you you know and i have guys on our team we have um uh, bilingual when we open back up we've got people up in north county we've got people down in south county south bay we've got people out out near grossmont we have before work we have after work we have um uh, weekend appointments we do couples who on Zoom, who would have thought? I mean, seriously, who would have thought? And so um, I wouldn't have predicted that ever. So we're just at our last few minutes here. We're at almost at our 6.30 mark here, Catherine. I do want to open up the floor, though, if anybody else um, while on this Zoom call um, would like to go ahead and if there's any questions, yeah. um, please go ahead and unmute yourself and feel free to ask Catherine Ask the yes, group if I thinking? forgot anything. Any questions for the EAP? I don't have a question. I was just, again, just trying to encourage more staff to get rid of that stigma. Yeah. Um, or I was telling Janice that maybe if you, um, I think we're doing the uh, the employee forum, right, in October? Right, right. And so maybe that would be a good way to also reach out to other people who have a hard time um, with that, that stigma. Um, and just to see maybe it's not just the counseling piece, right? We help you with um, mindfulness and, right. and how to find coping skills. And right. I just referred an employee this morning and I gave her the number. I have it on on speed dial <laughs> to give the contact to them so that that way they, uh, right. and I told them it's not, it's it's ways to help you cope with what's happening in your life right now. Right. Because sometimes it feels good just to go blah, right? And, and just, Absolutely. Right, and uh, you need help, right? Because if not, it's going to eat you alive. And so right. um, she definitely appreciated that, um, that we took the time to uh, send her that way. But I think yeah. I think that's always the biggest piece is just getting rid of that, that stigma. Because I even, like I said, I've never called EAP. Uh, I sh Maybe I should have, you know, some occurrences, but. Um, but that, because that's the best way to give the referral. Right. You can say, you know, I called them once, mm -hmm. blah, 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 blah. Right. You know, and um, the other the other thing I say to managers is, you know, tell them I, I will sleep better if I know that you've actually reached out. I will right. sleep better tonight. You know, yeah. and the other thing you can do, but you know what, when they're ready, they're going to call. Right. They'll call I, when they're ready. I've done that a couple times just because, again, there was something going on at home. Right, it was impacting her, um, and so I, I, I told her exact same things. I would feel yeah. much better if you please. Good, right? You, know, you don't have to tell me right what happens. It's just between you and them. But at least, please at least try to call. Which yeah. then they came back to yes, thank you so much for sending me, awesome. because good. actually it did help me. Right. Good. Yeah. Good. 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 So, good. Um, Catherine, actually, I've, I've been working with Tanya very closely as um, her old office, not this one in here, but her old office is now going to be transformed to a meditation space, which I got full reins to do some decorative work in <laughs> oh, there. And, um, yeah, I did hear about that. Yeah, and, and so yeah, I yeah, think yeah. that would be a location that we could actually pilot Tanya's, Tanya's department as the um, what you're doing right now at Chula Vista with Tanya yeah. comes in for her EAP for 10 minutes. She right. taps somebody else on the shoulder to come in it totally for 10 works. minutes. And so I think that could be definitely a pilot once our room is up and ready the next few weeks. We it's can like six bring... feet of separation though, right? Yep. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, it's pretty. Oh yeah. Okay. It's small, but definitely two people in there at a, yeah. at a maximum, it would be fine. Yeah. Yeah. And you would be surprised. And, and that's exactly how we did it down in Chula. Right. Is that the manager approached me first and then it was almost as we were talking about it, you know, we thought, you know, it's like, and yeah, and then when you go back out, it's like, and you can tell them in the huddle that that's what we're going to do. Right. And then you would just tap them. And then when I would finish with one person, I'd say, okay, just go tap somebody. 
because right. they're not gone that long. Right. You oh. know, and the only thing is, is that when you're on the floor, is that it's still going to be hard for them to just connect. But I'm open. Yep. Uh, I'll try it. I'll try it. Yep. Try it. Thank you for your time, Catherine. We look forward Welcome. to working with you a lot more here at Sharp Growth Month, especially since um, we know that th currently, you know, we have you in the Wellness Center on Thursdays, but um, we are going to try more ways to get you more introduced right. to our staff. Right, right, right. I'm going to go ahead and for the for the few people who are here that are left, I want to flash again on the screen here, um, the, if I can move this around here. I would like to share one last time before mm. it's already at 631 here, um, the screen for the QR code, if you didn't get that yet. So this is for the um, Did you see evaluation. The, did you see the comment about um, night, hopefully night shift will be included in this plan? Oh, oh. absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, we I'm need sorry. to figure out something. Go. Yeah. I absolutely. And I just love the feedback like that. So I'm definitely going to go through the Q&A there. Um, okay. But thank you again. Thank you, Sherman. Thank you, okay. Tanya. Thank you, Connie. Thank you for staying. Um, Maribel. And there was one more mm. down there. Yep. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Again, um, if it kind of seemed a little bit PC, it's our first time hosting a webinar. We were so excited, <laughs> Lisa and I, to do this for everybody. Um, and we will look forward to hearing the feedback and seeing our feedback to see if Sharp Grossmont or uh, other hospitals will be able to find this information useful. Useful. Right. Thank you for your, spending the, the evening with us. <laughs> Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Have a good night.